This is the Hammer Fisting Podcast. Is there any question that Demetrius Johnson is not the pound for pound best fighter on the planet? Because I'm convinced that he is. I don't. I don't know. I don't know. Like, I, 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 I feel like he is. But I don't, like, what are you asking me? If I feel like he is, or if like I think he is finally proven it to like everybody? It, both. All right. So yeah, I feel like he definitely is. I don't know. It, it might still like teeter on Anderson because of how Anderson beat guys. You know what I mean? Like when he was clowning him and, we're, we're and doing not t- that shit. We're not talking about the GOAT. I think that it's still early in Demetrius' yeah. career where he still has a lot more to do to solidify See, that without a doubt. That's the thing. He's not far off from like achieving the goals that Anderson achieved. and he's, But yet he still feels like he's far off from that, that GOAT title. You know what I'm saying? Like He tied the, uh, the championship defenses, but it doesn't feel like that big of a deal. And I don't think it'll feel like a big deal at 11 either. Which kind of sucks. I think he's. I think Demetrius Johnson is kind of veering into Floyd Mayweather territory because mm. he is so dominant and fight, especially when he fights guys that are the same size as him. Well, he, because, I mean, because remember, for you years, gotta say before, like he's complete opposite of Mayweather as far as like watching him goes. Oh no, you know what I mean? Of yeah. course, I'm just so saying. Make that very clear. I'm just saying that whether you understand pugilism when it comes to the defensive prowess of a. Uh, Money Mayweather, mm-hmm. a Floyd, or not, it, it's irrelevant. I mean, the guy is a defensive wizard, and when he goes, you know, Floyd Mayweather makes very good, high-level boxers look like yeah. they have no uh, reason being in that ring with him, and he is able to take guys as weapons and mm-hmm. pretty much make them non-existent. And I feel like because he is so good, sometimes you take that for granted and you start looking at the competition and you're saying, oh, well, look at the guys that he's fighting, yada, yada, yada. But it's total bullshit. I mean, when you look at the flyweight division, Demetrius Johnson has fought a lot of really tough guys. I mean, the flyweights, it's like watching a Bruce Lee movie, the way that these guys move and how fast they are. and Just, you know, the, the fact that it'll be on the ground, they'll be rolling around on the feet, they're throwing kicks. I mean, that knee he threw to the body of Heiss was fucking brutal and Mm -hmm. it was just split second timing he saw his opening capitalized and that's something that's just remarkable what i would love to see from mighty mouse is for him to go back to the bantamweight division because the thing that always bothered me about demetrius johnson is his complacency with his role within the promotion Mm -hmm. he had said when tj dillashaw was champion that he would fight tj dillashaw for two million dollars it's like dj look man you don't have the drawing power to warrant the UFC, and in this case, WME IMG, to open up the coffers and write that check to you because they're not going to get a return on their investment. But if Demetrius Johnson moves up to bantamweight and you got the Cody Garbrandts, the TJ Dillashaws, the Dominic Cruises, I remember he fought in the bantamweight division. He fought for the title, and yeah. it wasn't like he got completely destroyed by Dominic Cruz. And he's, you know, Demetrius is a completely different fighter now. Move up to bantamweight. Start getting people excited because right now there's really no one at 125 that I'm chomping at the bit to watch DJ fight. And that really has been his biggest issue because he's just been so good at 125 that who wants to watch him fight on a pay-per-view or headline a pay-per-view when you know that he's just going in there and despite him, you know, unless he slips on a fucking banana peel and his face lands right on the fist of his opponent and he gets knocked out by some freakish way, no one wants to see him just beat the same guys over and over again. So hopefully DJ, Matt Hume, his team, go to the drawing board and his manager look at the bantamweight division and say, okay, let's set our sights on there because then he can make a really big splash and it'll give the flyweight division time to grow, have new guys come into the mix, and then eventually if he ends up not being successful at 135, he can always go back down and take over the division once again that he's just been completely dominating. Yeah, I'd like to see him defend it one more time, I think, then do the move. I feel like it would have more selling power behind it. If you can say, oh, this guy, you know, this guy beat the... He holds the record for the most consecutive... You know, you can, you can sell it. He was complaining that uh, apparently they didn't fucking... There were, like, no commercials for that fight until the... Uh, unless, except for, like, uh, UFC 210. He said it was the only place that he saw a single ad for his fight. And that's what happens you know, when you have a promotion that's putting on as many fights as we're seeing from the UFC. 
they have only so many employees and resources that they can allocate towards certain fights. And that should be a pretty big one. There's fucking, there's like, what, nine or 11 titles in the entire organization. I think you can, you can put forth some promotion to, you know, promote your greatest fighter. Not when DJ is kind of, again, his complacency, if I'm the powers that be at Zufa, it worries me. And not, not just that, but it, if I'm Dana White, I'm saying, why are we going to go out of our way for this guy if he just doesn't care? Not saying he doesn't mm -hmm. care about being a champion or fighting, but he just doesn't make a splash. You never see him coming yeah. out like other fighters. Like we've seen time and, and time again. Like we saw re recently from Tony Ferguson, mm -hmm. where Tony Ferguson's like, I go out, I fight exciting fights, I bleed for this company, and it just seems like they don't give a shit. That's the type of passion. That's the type of fire. It's like if you're an employee at a company and you end up just not getting any any raises or you're not getting any bonuses and you're working hard, you're 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 you have a lot of pro productivity, but mm -hmm. you're just like, "Yeah, I'm satisfied with what I get paid." What is going to make your employer go out of their way to throw you more money? They're going to be like, "Oh, you know what? We got to only have to pay him this amount. He's happy with it, so that's that's a win for us." There has to come a time where you do have your fighting do the talking, but there also has to come a time where you let your mouth do the talking. And I'm not, I'm not saying for DJ to become Conor McGregor because that's just not in him. That's not who he is. But I would like to see a little bit more of a respect for his own legacy mm -hmm. and wanting to continually test himself and put himself in positions where he says to Dana, says, look, I'll move up and I'll fight either number one contenders fight or I'll fight the champion at 135. If I win, we better sit back down and start negotiating because I'll give you this, but if we, if I end up winning and I find success at 135 and people start growing interest and, and, and start building up a buzz about it, then we need to really reevaluate my place in this company. Because if he's not saying that, it doesn't give Dana or any of the powers that be at WME, IMG, or the UFC any sense of urgency to go out and do things differently. He's got to be a draw, though. You could be the best fighter in the world, and if no, you know what I mean? Like, no one cares to watch your fights, and whatever. You know, you're going to make the same fucking money you were before, no matter how many times you defend your title. He might just be cursed with being really good at fighting and just not having the personality to take him to superstardom.